A very good evening this uh, Thursday night. You know, if you've been watching us regularly, uh, we'll, we spent the summer, as you will recall, uh, debating the goings on at Sheffield Wednesday, the changes at the club, the new ownership, uh, the new head coach. And we talked about and debated how the Owls would do this season. We weren't very sure at all. We were scratching our heads. The answer is they're doing pretty well. And one man who's crossed the divide uh, between the old regime, uh, Milan Mandarik and uh, Stuart Gray, who was head coach at the time, to the new regime of Thai tycoon Depon Chansiri and head coach Carlos Carvalho is Lee Bullen. I'm delighted to welcome you, Lee. Uh, the great survivor, you've, you've crossed from that regime to this. Uh, you must be doing something right, quite clearly. Absolutely. No, I'm really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. Um, I had a fantastic time working with Stuart. Complete respect for the man. It was a big surprise uh, when the chairman made his decision. But Carlos has come in uh, with a completely clean brush, with a bit of backing from the chairman. And we had a little bit up and down to start with, but obviously recent results have been fantastic. Indeed, four successive victories as, as, as we speak to you now. Some great games coming up. Hull yep. City next weekend. Arsenal, of course, in the, in the League Cup at Hillsborough. It's a very exciting time. There's a real buzz about the place. This will be a real test for us coming up. We fully understand that. I think we've lost three games already this season. Um, two of those games were against teams that qualified for the playoffs last year, and one of them was a relegated team from the Premier League. Our next two League games are against teams that were relegated from the pit. So it's a real test for us. Yeah. On top of that, we've just got Arsenal as well, which is an easy one. But, <laughs> just uh, brush that one aside. Yeah. yeah, Middlesbrough and Burnley, for instance, were yeah. two of the games that you, you yeah. refer to there. They're, they're good, very strong teams, aren't they? And that, you know, you would expect to find those challenging. They'll be there or thereabouts at the end of the season, absolutely. But that was prior to us bringing in one or two uh, key signers before the transfer window closed. Uh, I think we're a stronger team now. I think the players have bought into the philosophy that Carlos is trying to lay down. Uh, and I think it's bearing fruit in the, in the results. Mm. We'll talk about some of the players brought in and, and the progress they're making and the team generally. But can I just take you back to the change in the summer? Because it, it's a habitual thing in football, isn't it? it that people change. Yeah. And you formed relationships. I know you didn't particularly know Stuart Gray, did you, when he, when he came in? Uh, to no, when Stuart first arrived, I think Terry Burton had just left, um, so Dave Jones needed a, a right-hand man to work alongside Paul Wilkinson, and um, Stuart came in, and you're right, I didn't know a great deal about Stuart, but slowly but surely as you got to know the man, I was still working at the under-21s, um, fantastic football person, really good people person, really had a good bond with the players last year, and I think that... I would say we punched above our weight at the back end of last season or for the full season when Stuart was in charge. Um, really got the best out of the players that we had uh, and the players really bought into Stuart's uh, methodology and, and the way he went about things. We had some fantastic results. Uh, again, I thought he uh, thought he was going to get the opportunity to carry that on this season, but changes are what happen in football. You mm. don't go into this, this job thinking you're going to be there for life. Things no. can change from one day to the next. And it's usually night follows day with a new owner as well. It's, it's, it's quite predictable. But even so, that must have been a slightly unsettling time for you and everybody. everybody. When somebody that you really respect leaves, yeah. leaves a club like No, that. everybody involved at the football club, I think. Uh, obviously, Stuart and John Dean uh, moved on. And then I was waiting on the phone call myself. Andy Rhodes didn't know where he stood with the goal yeah. coaching side of things. Um, you just It was a matter of time. Even when the new coach came in, you thought he's just going to try and suss you out, see if you get a feel for the type of person you are, and then you could still move on anyway. But luckily enough, we built a bit of trust and a bit of understanding, and I think I've got a good relationship with Carlos and his uh, three new coaches, and Andy Rhodes is similar. So we're heading in the right direction. Mm. Clearly, because there was all that talk about an English coach coming in, wasn't there, to, to balance things off, and that seems yeah. to have retreated now yeah. into the background. I think um, there was a couple of names mentioned um, prior to it, and... To be honest, at that time, I pictured myself just stepping back down to solely do the under-21s. Last year, I was doing the dual role, uh, which was fine, which was fine. But obviously, Carlos came in and initially needed a little bit of help. Um, so myself and Andy helped out. Um, there was names linked to the assistant's mm -hmm. job with an English-speaking coach. Some would debate I'm English-speaking, but... Um, <laughs> but as I say, we yeah. built up a decent relationship. I think that trust grew and 
I'm happy to say that he just wanted to keep me around, which is great. Yeah, it's gone from the need for an English coach to the need for a British coach, and you're you you are the British coach, Scottish so, coach, the Scottish coach. Ah, you. you insist on that. <laughs> you insist on that. What? Hey, by the way, what a coincidence! This I've never seen. You know, that it happens before. to be. It, Looks as if it'd make a good Christmas present, a birthday present for somebody. It does, I don't know. Is, is it yours? Uh, it looks like it. Don't know who wrote it. I think it could be wrote, written a little bit better, but other than that, it's... It was translated from Scots. <laughs> uh, I, it's a good doorstop. I, I know that whoever it. translated it from Scots spent a lot of <laughs> sleepless nights doing that. Uh, yeah, uh, subliminal advertising, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, forgive us for that. Uh, let's get back on track with what has been... You would have to say, I think, that had you been offered this position in the table, just outside the playoffs, from the start, mm -hmm. I think probably people would have accepted it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we've made a number of signings. And I remember when I first arrived as a player at Sheffield Wednesday under Chris Turner, made a massive turnaround of players there. I think he had got rid of 12 and brought in 10, or got rid of 10 and brought in 12. Yeah. And as happens with that such a big turnaround that you get inconsistencies, players starting to figure each other out and try to get an understanding of what the manager mm -hmm. wants and unfortunately Chris lost his job due to that inconsistency and we saw it at the beginning of the season, there was one or two disappointing results, uh, performances, but things have picked up and the players uh, that we have now have certainly understood what Carlos is after and it's been proved in the, in the yeah. performances and the results. Talk about Carlos. I, I spent a very enjoyable half hour with him earlier this week. Uh, he's not short of a word or two. What I like about him is the warmth. Uh, he, he certainly makes people feel good in his company. Yeah. He generates that. And yep. I imagine he does the same with players. Again, very similar to the way Stuart was. Very welcome. And he's got, he's got a good grasp of English. I think he would uh, give himself a hard time that he would like it to be better. But fantastic grasp of English. Really welcoming. It's tough tough if he decides to flip that switch he will go yeah. um, but more often than not he's so positive towards it even in a negative situation every half time it's all positive it's all about what we can do forget what's happened before if we've had a disappointing first half it's all about the positivity and pushing out and then and then the 90 minutes, should we still be on the reverse, then he'll let his feelings known. But it's important to stay in the moment, especially at half-time. He's, he's great. I know that you were impressed with him from the outset, around the time that others, journalists, were scratching their heads and saying, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, surely this can't be right. We've never heard of him. We had to look at, look at his record. But I, I think he made a pretty early yeah. impression on you on the training ground, didn't he? I think humans by nature are very, very inquisitive and very guarded with the way when they meet new people and they're not sure and yeah. quite often... Um, first impressions count and just the way he was as I, you've mentioned the warmth and the welcoming and the way he was to myself and Andy Rhodes who as you rightly say crossed the divide from the, the previous regime he really did welcome us into that group because he brought three coaches with him and we could yes. have been outcasts and he could have stayed speaking in Portuguese but he insisted he insisted that his three coaches spoke in English so myself and Andy understood what they were trying to get involved with and yes. get across and, and then obviously it on the little occasions where he's not got the exact word that needs to go, myself and Andy can step in and make sure that gets passed over to the players so they understand fully what's required. Mm. And he's, he's very big on this Englishness or, yeah. or, or retaining this championship core Absolutely. to the team, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, clearly he applies that to the coaching as well, but mm -hmm. it's important to him. Well, I think he fully understood what was required when coming into this league. He's obviously done a heck of a lot of homework before, uh, mm -hmm. before coming in and um, looking at historically the teams that have done well in the league and got promoted or got into the playoffs have had a, a really strong spine of players that know the championship whether they be British, English or foreigners that have been here a few years um, and he really did want to bed that in now don't get me wrong he also has his knowledge of the foreign market and that's why he brings in players of the quality Alex Lopez, Marco Mateus, uh, Lucas Joao yeah. these type of guys but your Forest who knows the league um, your Barry Bannons, your Ross Wallaces, your, your, your Michael Turners, these type of people, they are paramount to uh, teams that need a bit of success in this league because they know the league and they know what's expected Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday. Saturday. It's just relentless, especially over the Christmas period. Yeah. And they, these are the type of guys that can help carry one or two of the foreign lads that are new to it. They are picking it up. But your Turners and your Bannons and your Wallaces and people like McGugans, they, they can help these Mateus and Lopez's get through the Christmas period, the hard sort of non-stop 
action that is the championship. There's even others from the goalkeeper Kieran Westwood to mm. Tom Lees. You know, is, is a real well, as I say, I'm, I'm probably more oh, no. focusing on the new players that have come in, but then you've got your Leuvens and your Lees and your Kieran Lees and your Westwoods yeah. and these guys that and have been part of that and Hutch as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Been fantastic. And I, but also, you know, in terms of Englishness, I'm tempted to throw in Atty Newhook. Yeah. He's not English, but he, he plays yeah. like a wholehearted English centre forward, doesn't he? I think he's uh, well and truly winning over his doubters, I think, at the beginning of the season that. People don't realise uh, the amount of fear he puts into opposition teams and the amount of opposition managers that come in after games that are delighted when the big man's not started games or yeah. uh, delighted when we've taken them off. Because he can have such an effect. Yes, he can be frustrating at times. He knows it. The supporters know it. Coaches know it. But I tell you what, at times he takes care of two of their defenders, which leaves spaces for your... Fernandos, your Lucas Joao's, your Sergi Bushes that also play along the way. He's such an effective character and at times even when he's having a hard time, we're up against it and f supporters are asking for a change. We need to keep him on because sometimes you have to stand up to free kicks, corners coming into your box and he's a hell of a unit to have in the middle of your, of your box to head things away. So he can be effective from that point of view in the defensive role as well. He copes with the criticism very well. Uh, and yet, underlying that, I, I'm sure there's a bit of anger. Uh, it, 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 and that makes him a better player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact that he is resentful, indignant mm -hmm. about this, well, it's unfair, a lot of the treatments. I think people forget comments. he's in his young 20s. It wasn't that long yeah. ago he was under 21 football for Austria and things like that, and he came in and... The championship is relentless and it takes younger lads two or three years to, to really get to grips with it. And now we're starting to see, don't get me wrong, I think he's built up a great relationship with Fernando and Fernando's uh, Forestieri is really helping Atty as well, giving him confidence. Uh, I think there's a respect built up there. But even Lucas Joao, who's been hot and cold a little bit, he'll take a couple of years and we'll see the best of him. He's going to be a fantastic player when, mm. when he really gets used to the British way, but he's picking it up very, very quickly. But um, going back to Big Atty, he's... <laughs> He will. He's a character, and the fans are starting to love the big man. Yeah, I think there's more on his side than against. Without yeah, a doubt. absolutely. And that's uh, represented by the standing ovations he gets, yeah. the appreciation mm -hmm. that he gets. But he's actually only a few goals short per season of being an outstanding yeah. player, isn't he? I think that's the thing. If he, if if he got to that stage uh. of being that 15 goal, that 20 goal player, then. Uh, I don't think he'd be at Sheffield Wednesday much longer. That's the no. thing, because of his stature and his size, and if he gets regularly scoring 15, 20 goals a season, he's, he's going to go for big money. And the admiration that other managers clearly have for him. Yeah. Uh, they all, as you say... Oh, they, they just hate, play, hate playing against them. They, they just don't know how to them. handle them. Yeah. They don't know how to handle them. And, and, and it's not just the teams at the bottom end of the, season, it's, uh, end of the league, it's teams at the top end as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll talk a bit about individuals later, you know, some of the promising performances that we're starting to yeah. see, how the team's gelling. Uh, but going back to Carlos, uh, you know, I, I had this great half an hour with him, and you mentioned the tough side that he's mm. got. And mm. All managers, however nice, however genial, he's a genial mm -hmm. character, need that. And uh, he, he opened up on that. Mm -hmm. he, he kicked, he was furious after the home game against Middlesbrough, the yeah. defeat. I think the manner of the defeat more than anything. Mm -hmm. And he kicked him water bottles across the dressing room. Absolutely. That, it, well, you would have been there, so yeah. you're not surprised to hear me, uh, hear me say that. He's got that in his nature. He certainly has got that. I mean, you've got to remember, this was a centre-back in his day, and you see his height, he's only about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, if, he, if he is that. So, he's having to make up for that height difference in, in some other way. So, I would say aggression would be the way that he's got it. Um, that, that half-time talk, as you say, is coming, he's, he's kicked the water bottles about the place and he, he really was fuming at the time and he's, he's trying to get across to the players that getting two yards away from an opposite player is not getting tight, is not getting close enough. So he decided to pick on one of his uh, Portuguese coaches and he almost two-footed this, this lad right through the door of the changing room trying to get his point across. I mean, <laughs> the player certainly... Uh, certainly opened their eyes to the so fact that he has a switch. flying in in a yeah. mock challenge. It's the same as anything, listen, yeah. if, a, if a coach continually comes in shouting the odds and going ballistic, yeah. it slowly but surely loses its, uh, its message. So he is very much somebody that, oh, that, won't be, no. that won't be the norm. But no. when it does happen, it, it has a heck of a lot more effect. But now players are aware that it's there. Yeah. That's important, isn't it? They're, it is. they're, they're a little bit more wary. They know what could He's made a lot of happen. tough decisions uh, up to this yeah. point in such an early part of his career as a coach at, at Sheffield Wednesday. Listen, last season, Lewis McGugan's the first name on the team sheet. And now, 
Lewis has had to learn and buy into the way the manager wants and the fans want Lewis on the park. And Because Lewis, listen, technically he's probably one, one, if not the most gifted player we have mm -hmm. in our in our squad. Um, but even he's finding it hard to get into the team at the moment. Yeah. But the team are getting results, so he's, he fully understands his, his position and what he has yeah. to do to get himself there. But Sam Hutchinson's been phenomenal in that sitting in the defensive role in the midfield. Kieran Lee's been unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then trying to fit Lewis into that is difficult. But then when he's had his opportunities, he's been excellent. He's come off the bench, scored a wonder goal at the weekend to kill the game when we were under pressure. Yeah. Fabulous up at uh, Newcastle. So it just shows, I think, last the difference between this year and last year is what we have on the bench to come in. Yeah. And they can change games like that. And as you say, the like fact that Ms. Guggen can't guarantee a spot exactly. is, is which, testimony to how the standards have lifted. Which is crazy, because he's such a yeah. fabulous, fabulous football player. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned Kieran Lee. Uh, in the time that he's been at the club, the improvement, as you say, has mm -hmm. been me meteoric. Absolutely. From being a struggling right back mm -hmm. when he first came in. I, I think it was right back that he, he, he came he, in. When he played at Oldham, he was regularly a right back. Yeah. But then he was brought in, as you say, and he was brought in as a right back, I think. Yeah. But slowly but surely, he sort of bedding himself into that uh, midfield role, whether it be on the right side. At, at the back end of last season, I think it was more uh, Semedo Magugan in the middle or Hutch Magugan in the middle with Kieran Lee playing a slightly more right sided role. Yeah. Um, but this season he's got he's got a heck of a good habit of making runs beyond strikers, which are hard to mark yeah. for defenders. They're too yeah. busy trying to deal with two strikers or one striker. And then Kieran Lee makes great runs and he's such a fantastic professional the way he goes about his training and his attitude towards things when he's not in the team at the beginning of the season, a few pre-season friendlies and at the, the first couple of games he wasn't in the team. Says so I think it's on his job, bides his time yeah. and waiting on his opportunity. Yeah. He's got his opportunity and he's taking it with both hands. Yeah, and he's getting goals, as you yeah, say, he's getting goals. Well, he got him putting goals, goals at the back end of last season. That yeah. injury time winner at Rotherham when we were 2-1 down with, what, three or four minutes to yeah. go and then he we go and equalise and then he nicks it. He's just got that. But that sums Kieran Lee up to the max. Yeah. In the 96th minute, he's still making runs for it. He, can, he continually runs 13, 13k during every game. It is, it's unbelievable. I don't think the rest of the country is aware of, of how good Kieran Lee is. So we better stop talking about him. <laughs> well, it's all right. We've just got a Sheffield <laughs> audience. Although I do gather somebody uh, watching us in America. America. So it's getting, yeah. it's going, we're going global. Twitter tonight. inquiry. Uh, <laughs> what time is it in America? Goodness me, it's about seven hours on, isn't it? Or something. Seven, seven hours behind. Oh, about midday. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a break coming up, but we've got a couple of minutes be be before then. Mm -hmm. Carlos Carvalho, just to round up our... It's Carlos Carvalho. Now, Car our, our guy before the game continually says Carvalho as well. Now, that's a guy that played at Chelsea, wasn't it? Carvalho. And there's a guy called William Carvalho as well. Yeah. Carvajal. 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 It's not Carvajal. Right. Is anybody okay. pronouncing it right on the local scene? Listen, Scott speak the screen's <laughs> English. So, it's Carvajal. Carvajal. Well, I'm going to have to practice this, and I have to learn it. I'm just going to call him Carlos from now on. Fantastic. The pros are okay. We'll both get where we're right. Going. Okay. I I get the feeling he's a he's a very quick um, summariser of a player. He can very very quickly make, make a decision on, for instance, Kieran Lee. Mm -hmm. He decided early yeah. on, yeah. having seen him in training. Yeah. Is that you know he can? I think that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Um, I think he's really pleased with the group he's got and obviously with any coach coming in we've got a big squad now there's one or two players that are probably on the periphery that he feels maybe needs to get out on loan and get a little bit of game time and things like that he just doesn't feel that they're, they're ready to play a big part in the squad and that mm. um but that's the difficult side of coaching stroke management and everything like that is deciding when you have those players you, you, sometimes you're better being honest and upfront with one or two players if he doesn't feel that they're, they're quite making the the grade in his eyes that um doesn't mean he's getting rid, maybe they need to just get out and get some game on loan to come back in and then mm. they'll be in a, a much better position to try and break into the squad, but you certainly most a, players. You yeah. have got quite a few in that category. Have, we, have, we have, yeah, Bush. now I think we've got, well, Sergio Bush, Keelan yeah. Lavery, um, Lashman's not played a game, Claude no. Yelna, um, and we've got one or two that were in the squad now, out the squad. The, the most hardest job mm. at the moment is picking the 18 because there's five or six not even in the squad at the moment. Yeah. I think the last game, Keelan was suspended, but Sogo, who's done well in, in games, yes not even in the squad. Uh, Semedo, fantastic up at Newcastle, not even stripped. Uh, Sasso's done well in a couple of games, can't get on the bench. It's, yeah. 
It's crazy. It's all very healthy and refreshing yeah. and uh, f must fill you with excitement looking no, to the future. And I hope you'll rejoin us in around five minutes' time. More discussion about Sheffield Wednesday under Carlos Macavalal. Is that right? Have no. I got the put no. the MC no. in front? For You've got five minutes to practice. <laughs> we'll be doing that. Do rejoin us. James Gregg will be here to round up all the other sporting action. See you then. Cheers. <laughs>